The third entity that we want to discuss in geometry in 3D is that of a line. How do we describe a line in three dimensions? First, let's decide what we're going to use to determine a line, and that is we're going to use a point passing through the line and a parallel directional vector. So the line that we are going to describe has to pass through the point T and be parallel to this directional vector. Now, we usually describe a directional vector using the symbols Rx, Ry, and Rz, but some people use also the symbols L, M, and N because they're like slopes or directions. So be prepared to see these letters or these letters or even other letters. Now, what we want to do is to be able to determine an equation of the line using these two things, and from the, t the equation of the line, be able to determine these two things. So we should be able to go backwards and forwards between line and point plus parallel directional vector. There are three forms that are used to describe lines in 3D. The most frequently used one is the parametric form of a line in 3D, and it looks like this. So it has three equations describing the coordinates of a point via or through a parameter t. So t can take on any real value, and every time we take a real value for t, we should get a point on our line. Here's the point t. Here are our components rx, ry, rz. Or we could have written the same form like this using L, M, and N. Remember, these are just numbers, so when you substitute, you can't tell the difference between whether we use the letters Rx, Ry, Rz, or we use the letters L, M, and N. Let's see an example. A typical problem might say, find the line passing through, and there'll be a point here, and parallel to, and there'll be a directional vector here. So let's pick a point. Let's say T, 1, 2 minus 1 and a parallel directional vector RP 1 minus 1 2. Let's see what these look like. So T 1 2 minus 1. Here's T and RP starts at 0 0 and ends at this point. So 1 minus 1 2 and we have the vector starting from 0, 0 to that point. So this is RP. And what we're looking for is the line passing through T parallel to RP. So let's just see that how we, what we want. So we'll just draw a line right on top of the, the directional vector. And then pick it up and move it on to T. So we're looking for the equation of this line. So let's use our parametric form. We would have P equals, and a brace, X, Y, Z equals, equals, equals. Next comes our point. So 1, 2, minus 1, X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z. And then we use the components of our our parallel directional vector, so plus 1 times t, minus 1 times t, and plus 2 times t. Let's clean that up, and we get x equals 1 plus t, y equals 2 minus t, and z equals minus 1 plus 2t. Now, the line that passes through T and is parallel to RP is unique. There's only one such line. However, the set of equations is not unique. I could use a different point. I'd have to find it, but a different point than T and substitute it here, and it would work. Or I could multiply RP times any value and substitute it here, and I would still get equations of the line. The difference would be what values of t give me what point on the line. But all the values would still be there, even though the equations look different. The line is unique. 
the equations are not unique. In this particular set of equations, if t equals 0, what do I get? 1, 2, minus 1. I get my point, t. What about if t equals minus 1? What point do I get? It has to be a point on the line, but what point do I get? So x would be 1 minus 1, so x is 0. y would be 2 plus 1, so y would be 3. And z would be minus 1 minus 2, so minus 3. So the point 0, 3, minus 3 should be a point on this line. 0, 3, minus 3. And let's see that it is. Extend our line farther down. And it is. And any value of t that I put in gives me a point on this line. And it must do that. So even if I put in a weird value like the square root of 3 or minus pi or 17,231,000, it will give me a point on this line. The different equations give the points for different values of t, but you still get all the same points because the line is unique. Okay, what are some other forms of the line? There's the standard form of the line in 3D where we put the components of the directional vector in the denominator. A lot of people do not like this form of the line because it is possible that two of these could even be zero. In our case, none were zero. You can have one be zero or two be zero. You can't have all three be zero. But still, it looks odd if you look like you're dividing by zero. People like this form where you don't see that. And the third form that's used frequently in applications is the vector parametric form. It, in short, it looks like this, and people like it because it's extendable to many dimensions. X does not mean little x. It's a big x vector. It means x, y, z equals x, 0, y, 0, z, 0, plus lambda times r, x, r, y, r, z. Lambda here is playing the role of the parameter. It's the same thing as t. You put in different values for lambda to get the different values of the points. In every single one of our formulas, we have used the point and the directional vector. That's how you do it. And you work backwards in the same way. We'll do that in a different problem. Now let's see this in our 3D software. So here is our 3D software, GeoGebra. And let's draw our point. So here's t, 1, 2, minus 1. And let's draw our directional vector, 1, minus 1, 2. There it is, r. And now let's draw our line. And it is p equals, and notice that it is in vector form. It is in the third form that we gave down here. That is, x is the, here's the point t, and lambda, 1, minus 1, 2. And you can see that it passes through t and is parallel to r. And we can turn this if we want to. And we can see that it's parallel at every point and goes through t. OK. And now let's see how the points go on that. Make a slider for lambda. And we'll start it at 2 because the value is up here. And let's see the point. So there's the point, 3, 0, 3, when lambda equals 2. We can substitute in and see it. And now let's start our animation. So these are points for lambda equal to those values. And of course, lambda can be mean time values. Let's stop it at 1. So when lambda equals 1 for this set of equations, we get 2, 1, 0. And then when lambda equals 0, we should get our point t. That's what we said. So let's watch it. There it is. It's at t. And then we tested for t equal to minus 1 here lambda equal to minus 1. So let's go all the way down and see if we get 0, 3, minus 3 like we have here. So that's that.